How do I move on? My current partner cheated and doesn't love me anymore. First and foremost, I am a 27-year-old man who is in a relationship with a 22-year-old woman. I am the mother of two children, one with my current partner and the other with a previous relationship. I have two children with my current boyfriend. So far, I've had the impression that I've completely wrecked my life and messed it up beyond repair. As a result of learning the truth about my current begumums cheating on me on so many times and in so many ways, it negatively impacted both my mental and physical well-being. She has no respect for me, and she shows no affection or appreciation for whatever I do for her. She just hires me because she needs the protection I give. Despite knowing all of this, I am unable to go. Just thinking about it makes me feel sick, despite the fact that I know I need to. My ex-girlfriend thinks that I'm not a true male and that I act in a womanly manner when I try to communicate my pain and agony. Her energy is depleted just by the unpleasant look she receives. I abandoned my family in order to be with her, and now I'm unable to return to my previous life. If I moved away, I'd have to pay rent somewhere, but I'm too lazy and depressed to bother. So I stay, despite the fact that it is slowly killing me. As a result, I burst into tears and addressed the situation with her family, who lives close, and she is furious with me. All of the advice I'm getting is to swallow my pride and go on, but I'm not able to do so. I am in desperate need of aid and advice since I am unable to do this task on my own. I'm too feeble, and I care too much about her. What should I do, and how should I go about doing it? Update. This time, I'll keep it brief. I've reunited with relatives and friends and am now residing at my brother's house. To cut a long tale short, my ex is now accusing me of failing to love our kid, demanding money, threatening me, and advising me not to return to the house where the rest of my belongings are. It's all about money now. Every text and phone call is about getting money for the kid, despite the fact that I have left money and purchased various items for the kid. I blocked her on practically everything and left one route open in case anything is wrong with my kid, but she uses it to make conflicts. Granted, I don't engage, no matter how terrible her words are. I'm too emotional, and she knows it, and she tries to use it against me, but that's no longer the case. Story 2. Wife's Affair with Cousin's Husband Wife had a two-year relationship with her brother-in-law, her cousin's husband. Cousin and B.I.L. have been married for 15 years and have no children of their own. The affair started when my mother-in-law took over the care of my three children, ages 9, 7, and 5, while I was abroad on business. To set the scenario, I should mention that my in-laws are fantastic with children and that they like being in his company. Because I was periodically away for 2-3 weeks at a time, for overseas travels, my wife claimed that it was just an emotional affair that started because she needed someone to rely on when I was away. She admitted that they may have kissed a few of times, but claimed there was nothing more between them. After evaluating our current situation and realizing that my wife has been a good mother, I decided to give it another shot on the condition that we remove BIL from our life. The BIL has been completely removed from our lives since we discovered this about two years ago. She continues to see her cousin but her cousin is not officially aware of the connection between her and her cousin. Cousin has a terminal illness, and we thought it best not to burden her. It is turned into a dead bedroom despite our best efforts over the preceding two years to work out our marriage. After two years of frustration, I confronted her about the possibility of getting a divorce from her. I told her that I had completely forgotten about what had happened, but that there was no need for me to stay since she didn't seem to be interested in me at all. The BIL has been removed from our lives, and my wife claims that by doing so, we have alienated ourselves from the rest of the family, we avoid family gatherings when he is there, and have caused damage to our children. I disagree, who had got very attached to BIL. The mother expresses her guilt for separating our children from the rest of the family, and for taking away their friend Bill. Finally, she feels that since I am unable to forgive her father-in-law, I am not really forgiven by her and that she is unable to sleep with me because I am not truly forgiven by her. I told her that by giving us another chance, I had already accomplished a great deal, but that bringing the BIL back into our lives was absolutely non-negotiable at this point. 
I am unable to cope with the negative memories that are awakened whenever I see his face. Hear his name. Is this a clerical error? Is it necessary for me to demonstrate even more forgiveness and compassion in order to reinsert him into our lives? Update. First and foremost, I'd want to express my gratitude to everyone for their contributions. I wasn't expecting such a strong response, but I've been completely overwhelmed by the outpouring of support. Following the comments and hearing other people's points of view, I am much more able to comprehend what is being discussed. However, I'd want to offer a few of more information. I was raised in a pious and conservative household. Despite growing up with little money, he became very rich at a young age, 30s. Among our many possessions are a million-dollar house that we paid cash for, as well as other valuable items and beautiful autos. We go abroad with our family at least once a year, if not twice a year, for vacation. For the most of our marriage, I was consumed with providing for the family in ways that I had not been able to when I was a child. This included working very long hours and over a period of 2-3 weeks at a time when a new product launch was nearing completion. Her whole rationale for having a dead bedroom is because she doesn't feel love for me because she feels I view her as a liar, which she believes is incorrect. It took her two years before she finally admitted to having an affair. She had previously said that they just sipped coffee and spoke about their lives until things grew emotional and they kissed one another. Nonetheless, over the next two years, they opted to maintain a rigorous level of stability. During the next two years, I attempted to mend my relationship with her, telling her that I need full and absolute honesty in order for us to heal and go on. When I found many hotel key cards in her possession, she claimed that her father-in-law had given them to her as a Christmas present. When I looked into it more, I found a profusion of excursions to pubs, some of which were open till the wee hours of the morning. Finally, I got an anonymous email from someone claiming to be aware of the link, and they gave me with the exact same hotel names that I had seen on hotel cards throughout my investigation. She had said that she and her partner were having an emotional affair at this point in time. This was her first public acknowledgement of having a relationship with another man. After then, though, it was all downhill. It is her argument that I don't trust her because she responds to and entertains anonymous communications, and that I don't believe her when she claims there was no involved in the incident. I started seeing a therapist who advised me that, although some people are embarrassed to admit their shortcomings, if you feel she is a great person in general, you should refrain from interrogating her about specific behaviors during the affair and instead concentrate on reconciliation. As a result, she has a grudge towards me for doing further research and, not just taking her word for it. To be really honest, I've given up thinking about what occurred and am just worried about the happiness of my children. Everything was built by myself, and I put forth a lot of effort to provide for my family. I offered her half of the assets in return for half of the custody of the children, and she accepted my offer. It is her contention that she will agree to a divorce provided I agree not to return to our hometown. We had made a cross-country move for my career six years ago. I told her that I was unable to make such a guarantee, I already stepped down at my company from the VP position to a consultant position because I needed a mental break. I told her that I would make good on my promise that we would return to our hometown, where we had met and where our marriage had begun in the first place. She is adamant in her opposition and continues to accuse me of meddling with children's lives, private school, elite sports coaching, etc. In response, she asks, why don't you just divorce me and go back to living and co-parenting together? I informed her that I am not a doormat. However, I feel that as I write this, it becomes more apparent to me that I do not deserve this treatment. After all I've gone through and am willing to give up, it seems that she just doesn't understand it.